Many in this small town believe the disgraced sheriff knows a lot more about the missing couple than he's saying. So I decided to pay him a surprise visit, one that I will surely never forget. Welcome to Love County, Oklahoma, a small backwoods community smack dab in the middle of Tornado Alley that's caught up in a gigantic vortex of secrets, lies, and two possible murders. It's like a lifetime movie. It's hard to believe that there is that much corruption all clustered in one space. A space and time when 17-year-old Molly Miller and 21-year-old Colt Haynes vanish. I never in my life thought we'd be dealing with something like this. It's a family's worst nightmare. What begins with a police chase. The driver of the vehicle spun the tires, um, throwing gravel all over the patrol car. Ends in anguish for family members. It's really hard. But trying to find out what happened to Molly and Colt uncovers possible corruption from the very top. The allegations that the sheriff is facing right now, some pretty serious charges for a sheriff. To the very bottom. Dope dealers, thugs. And this is the man who was running the county. Yes. The twisted tale of alleged corruption and mystery begins on a hot, sticky summer night in Wilson, Oklahoma, when... This dark-colored Honda Accord sped into the parking lot. The driver of the vehicle spun the tires and uh, then took off out of the parking lot, headed southbound towards Dove County. The chase is on. Carter County Sheriff's deputies radio neighboring Love County Sheriff's Department for backup. During the police chase, from from my understanding, the sheriff of Love County told a deputy to call off the chase because he didn't want another one of his cars tore up. The sheriff of Love County, Joe Russell, knows who's behind the wheel. His name is James Con Nip, just plain con to the locals and just plain trouble to deputies. Nip had a history of spinning out his tires in front of police and then running from them. Then as quick as it began, the chase is over. The taillight's last glimmer spotted by deputies as the car barrels down Long Hollow Road. And where that dirt road dead ends is where the disappearance of Molly Miller and Colt Haynes begins. Unbeknownst to deputies, Khan isn't alone on his joyride. In the passenger seat is Colt Haynes, a happy-go-lucky guy. Laughing, he laughed a lot. And he laughed all the way through his face. His eyes laughed. His, you know, uh, he just lit up. And in the back seat, Molly Miller. She's just a bubbly little girl, you know, who, who enjoyed life and enjoyed everybody. She's very compassionate toward people, you know. If she sees somebody getting hurt, um, she's going to take up for them. News anchor Maureen Kane from our affiliate, KXII, is in the newsroom the day the story breaks. We know that on July 7th, James Connip, Colt Haynes, Molly Miller were all in a car together, according to the affidavit. OHP troopers say that all three of those cell phones pinged in the area of Wilson and Ardmore, and that they were all together during that time, during that night. And that night, just after midnight, the 911 switchboard at the Love County Sheriff's Office lights up. There was uh, no information. Uh, transmitted. It was just a call into 911 and then she hung up. Moments later, more calls to 911. One, two, three, now more than a dozen coming in every other minute in rapid succession. All dropped calls, all from Molly's phone according to cell phone records obtained by Molly's family. So she makes a 911 call at 12.57 a.m. Yeah, there's where it starts. Okay. And then there are constant calls. I mean, there are calls every few minutes. Yeah. So how is it possible with calls going on for hours every few minutes that neither one of them could be found? Right. Then a call from Colt. His call goes through. Colt called several people. Um, I have talked to one of the people he talked to, and um, he said that Colt told him he was lost in the woods, laying in a creek bed, he didn't know where he was at, and that his ankle was broken and the bone was sticking out. At this point, it's the wee early morning hours. Molly and Colt are alive, but lost. 
Their friends head out searching for the pair in the woods off Long Hollow Road, where Molly and Colt claim Khan dropped them off. They happened to get onto someone's property, and he said, um, what are you guys doing on my property? And they said, oh, well, I'm looking for my friend. He's lost in the woods. He said, well, let me go back inside and get my gun, and I'll shoot it up into the air. And if he can hear it from where he's at, you'll know he's nearby. The man shoots his gun. Colt, still on the other end of the cell phone, can't hear it. The friends know they're in the wrong area. Around the same time, the 911 calls stop. The last phone call was 939. From my understanding, at that point, around 10 o'clock in the morning, the phone went dead. Um, Colt and Molly's about the same time were turned off. Colt's buddies drive back to town. They don't find Colt and Molly, but they do find Con, with no car, no Colt, no Molly, and no answers. Con Nip, I think he's an evil person. If Molly was last with him, which we know now, and he didn't do anything to Molly, why wouldn't he for help us try to find her? Concerned they may be in over their heads, the missing kids' families claim they reach out personally to the Love County Sheriff, Joe Russell, for help. Joe Russell refused to take the report. He said it wasn't his problem. Just by his actions alone, and the fact that he wouldn't even take a police report, it was pretty quick that we figured out that this is, this is something more than just Molly missing. More? It was a big cover-up. It's been cover-up from, from day one. But why in the world would the sheriff of Love County be covering for a criminal? He's just a dirty cop. Up next. Hey, Joe Russell. What happens when we go knocking on the sheriff's front door? I'll go in there.